popular player on the senior tour because he is one and seven in championship games. Last year in 1991, he bowled eight games on television. They averaged 242 at him for those eight games. He says 1992 is a new year, and they're not going to average that much. He's going to average that much. He's looking for things to turn around tonight. And, of course, we have the reigning PBA Senior Player of the Year, John Handegard, back in a very familiar position, the number one spot. He simply ran away from the field here last night. And the way he ran away was he just made more good shots than any other player. John is a perfectionist. He has a, a very stylish game, and he just repeats shots. And he just wore down the field and just outdistanced him. But tonight, it's only one game, Denny, so anything can happen. And, of course, $9,000 to our winner this week. Gene Stuss and Don Gilman are set to go in match number one. <laughs> Championship pair, lanes 21 and 22. And Gene Stuss trying to live down what happened last week at the showboat in Las Vegas. He's got confidence in it. Players averaged about 210, all five of them, that is, composite-wise. Championship round there, Gene opens with a strike, and obviously feels better about this pick. Don Gilman a little slow getting up. Uh, I asked him if he'd ever been on any kind of local telecast or anything. He's like, nope. He says, I'm a true rookie. So this is his first shot. I'm sure that uh, even at 55, his heart's beating quite rapidly right now. Stroke type player, turned it a little early, and crosses over and trips out the sixth hand. We did not see him throw the ball on the Brooklyn side in an hour of practice. Well, it's different when they turn that light on, I tell you. Leans over, it's a four-step player, and holds the ball like Marshall Holman. Very simple game, short backswing, nice slide. You know, he's got a simple game. Once he gets lined in, he repeats shots, and uh, he's got a nice roll on the ball, Then His ball carries well. Don averaged 233 for the opening round and was second after six games in this tournament and comes back nicely and doubles up on Gene Scott. Did you see him extend through that ball that time? I mean, the hand went right around the ball, the fingers imparted lift to it. Very nice hand release. It's just more relaxed. He got that break the first frame. Gene Stuff, or Stuss rather, who defeated Bob Court last night in the position round game, 214 to 205, just snuck into the top five. Tries for the light hit and gets it. Four shots, four X's here at Cowboy. I'll tell you what, Dan, there were a lot of pins standing there for a second. They all fell down. That was really a weird hit. <laughs> Watch Gene, five-step player. Again, uh, but he, what we're looking for him is to see if he stays down as he lets the ball go. Boy, he wants to come up. You know, it, it, it's so close. The difference between a good shot and a bad shot with him. Still favoring that tender left knee that was injured a week ago. Beautiful shot by Gene Stouts on the left-hand lane. Stayed down really nice with that shot all the way through. But even on his good shots, you know, he lets it go, and then it's just instinctive for him to stand straight up. Don Gilman, 55 years of age. Out here playing with the kids. Crosses over again on the right-hand lane, and this time not as fortunate. Well, last time the uh, three pin tripped out the six this time he leaves the solid six and he had the right leg figured out in practice he's just not extending through that and that's caused by nerves and pressure right now hails from oregon city oregon and uh john handegar told me that he's been bowling against don for the better part of 30 years he said he started to bowl him in oregon events back in the early 60s he said he's a very fine player and if you take a look at the board look at Gilman was never lower than fourth at any time during the week well that's amazing uh, he just had a good reaction here all week long leading the tournament after the fourth round quick look at the board five strikes and six frames things happening quickly here at Cal Bowl in Lakewood California and soft with the speed the big four jumps up on lane 21 soft all the time you know when you get a little sharp reaction at that back end we watch it here the ball's pretty much on line but he's really slowed down with the speed on this one you can't quite tell how fast it's going the bowler tracks too far away for these feeble eyes to see oh there it is 15.6 <laughs> that's getting the speed down there six out you always want to get the two, Dan. You need uh, every pin that you can get. So Gene Stuss, who was a victim last week, now leads by 29 as he heads into the fourth frame after starting with the first three. 
Phoenix Ball's reacting really interestingly on the telecast. It skids, makes a hook, and then kind of rolls out right at the pins. There's the skid, now it's moving. That one didn't roll out. Earlier when the back ends were a little drier, the ball was kind of going straight at the pocket. That one kept finishing all the way through. So the oil is carrying down the lane, something we talked about in the tip. All right, would you prefer to have your ball roll out in the pocket or continue to hook? Uh, I never had a trouble with my ball rolling out of the pocket then. You mean it wasn't rolling by the time it got there? <laughs> <laughs> Many times that's true, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Back in the full roller days, perhaps. And even later. <laughs> <laughs> One Ooh. thing is for sure, Stuss is online, lined up, and targeted on 21 and 22. Had one light hit, but other than that, Gene is now 5 for 5. And poor Don Gilman, the first time he's on television, he kind of guy's got 5 in a row at him. It reminds me of when Nelson Burton beat me my first time, he had 6 in a row at me. So. Well, he just tried to, tried to welcome you to the big leagues. As you mentioned, you know, Don thinks, boy, he comes out, finishes 21st. Goes right up and makes the telecast. Boy, it's easy out here, but... Uh, Let him talk to John Hersena. They've averaged 240 at him for the last eight games. That's an incredible record for him. One and seven in title matches. He's got to get a little meaner or something. You know, the yeah. big physical body. Throw a little fear to his opponent. He is a good-hearted guy. He, he goes out, and no matter what happens, he's going to enjoy himself. Opening match, moving along quickly, Gene Stuss with a five-bagger, leads by 49, so he's trying to send Don Gilman to Escondido about five frames early. Right. Get him on the road quickly. What a difference a week makes. Last week it was 153 in the title match. He's got he's got that beat almost right now. <laughs> he's already got, uh, let's see, 110. He's already got 120 if he doesn't throw another ball. There you go. Better Let's shot. Turn around, must have known it. Left a soft 10 pin. Some of the players are having a little trouble sticking on the left part of the approach shooting 10 pins. Uh, Tim Alvin, we'll see in the next game, uh, spent a lot of time practicing 10 pins during this hour of practice. Yeah, I think he spent 55 minutes shooting the 10 pin and the 7 pin and about 5 minutes trying to find the pocket. Of course, the first shot he threw at the pocket, he struck. So maybe he knew something that we did. Spare up for Gilman in the sixth, but he is down by 50 because Gene Stuss has done nothing but label the pocket here at Cal Bowl in Lakewood. Bud Light, the clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. Batman Returns is at McDonald's on 6 32 ounce collector cups, topped off with flying crispy bat disc lids. You can get a superheroic cup at a special price when you buy any extra value meal. Because what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. I'm a big man. Why do so many men stick with Vic? I'm a big man. Because there's a big for every beard. Regular, sensitive metal. Yeah, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. The championship round finals of the Pacific Cal Bowl PBA Senior Open are being brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by Walmart. Always the low price, always. Gene Stuss with nine career sanctioned 300 games started with the first five. Well, he's not even thinking about it at this point. Then. He gets a couple more, and it'll start floating through the back part of his mind. But right now, he's just thinking, build on that lead. And ahead he is by 50 pins. Is it six in a row? No problem. It's, it's floating from the back to the front now. <laughs> it's getting in the frontal lobe there. <laughs> right flush in the 1-3, in the 6. Just clipped the 10 going around. Did you see that? I mean, Gino is humming that thing, too, Michael. He doesn't like to throw real hard. He'd rather just stroke. That's how he figures he hurt in trouble with his knee last week, and he had to throw hard. Really gave that room. Boy, did it come back nice. A seven-bagger, so if you need to get something to eat or if you have to 
Don't, yeah, don't, don't go away no, right now. Just yeah. stay seated right now because we may be watching something here in the next few frames. Don Gilbert just wants to get out of the way. Ah, soft tap of the 10 to a strike for Gilbert. This uh, game kind of reminds me of my first game ever in match play in 1967 in San Jose. I bowled Jim St. John. He started with the first 11 at me, left a fast 4-7 on the 12th ball for 298, and said, welcome to the PBA. Were you giving him the Durbin jinx on the 12th shot? <laughs> no, no, I was rooting for it. Okay. And what did you shoot? I don't remember. Wasn't enough. It definitely not enough. I and the 3-6-10 is what's left on lane 21. Gilman pondering his first ever appearance on national television, and it's uh, win or lose, been a great week for him. He's proved he can compete with these guys out here at 55 years of age, and uh, there's a lot of guys like him, Dan. It, it's interesting because Don uh, said that he figured it might take him a year or two to get to a championship round and make some finals, because he, he said, I need to get in there and get some experience and, and, you know, bowling against all the legends, and here it is, the second tournament, he's on the ball again. I think, though, that his favorite of the two lanes is the left lane. You watch the follow-through here, Dan. Watch it. See, he's he's trying to help that thing back, and it's dry out there, so the dryness is bringing the ball back, but that really wasn't his ace shot. The left lane is hooking even more, it appears to me, and so he trusts it more on the left lane. Oh, he really broke the elbow on that one. He's flying back. Thus with the first nine, five 300 games in the championship round in PBA history, none by a senior. A little light on lane 22 for Gilman. And you can see the oil traveling down the lane. Gilman is in slightly further, arcing the ball more than, than Stuss. Stuss is going straight down about four or five. And now the ball won't make it back for Gilman. It's kind of caught in between. It needs to be further outside. Funny, in the practice, you and I were both thinking that some of the players would play inside because that's what looked like a favorable shot. And now all of a sudden the lights will come on and Stuss, probably Tim Albin will play outside. I don't know about Handy or Hersina, but obviously Stuss has made the right choice. Office. And don't forget, we've got some outstanding golf coverage coming your way this weekend. The Kroger Senior Classic. Al Guyberger is the defending champion. They'll play the Grizzly Course. That's right, it's called the Grizzly Course down in Kings Island, Ohio. First strike in the tenth. Well, is Gene Stuss, obviously he realizes he's won this game, Mike, but when else is going through the line right now? Is he thinking about the 10,000 for 300? He's thinking more about the 300 itself. I had the first nine one time in my career on television, you know, and all you're, all you're really thinking about when you get up in that 10th frame is making a quality shot. A few years ago, we almost had our first ever 300 game on ESPN, remember? Cheektowaga lanes, or Cheektowaga to York, I should say. Throughway lanes where Mark Roth started with the first 11. Well, that's the 10th end. And then we had Jim Harvey a few years ago in Tucson who had uh, the first 11 and left uh, the 1 2 4, I believe. <laughs> so. Well, we're going to find out shortly. Ah, speaking of perfect games, Bill Johnson. And less stubble field with perfectos here at Cal Bowl, but uh, this one would be an interesting 300 game. Here it comes. Boom! He keeps hitting that light hit and just blowing him out of there. The angle of the ball coming in from that outside angle is just destroying the five minutes. Trying to relax a little bit, do you think, at this point in time? He's trying to keep the adrenaline under control, the heart rate under control, and again, just make the shot. That's 
That's what he's thinking in his mind. One more good shot right here. Didn't waste any time. Gave it more room. And it's in and in a row for Gene Stoss. One more and he jumps into the PBA record book. And that was his best shot of the game so far, especially on that right lane. He trusted that went all the way out there. You really did you notice how the crowd really comes alive after he gets that 11 strike see that trust right out there swung it out to that first board and just finished hard all the way I'm told, from Brunswick. Gene Stuss has created PBA history on the senior tour. And here's the replay. Boy, just perfect. Absolutely. Look at the eyes. Olympic athletes. All told, they put in millions of training miles. It's the same idea behind our Firestone Firehawk Endurance Championship Series. The Firestone performance tires we've raced have run up more than a million and a half miles, and everything we learn goes into every Firestone performance tire we make. Is it worth it? We think so. Go for the gold with Firestone tires from Moomaw's Firestone, Mount Joy. Now you can get drunk drivers off our Susquehanna Valley Highways. Hi, I'm Senator Gib Armstrong. If you see someone you think is driving under the influence, call the Lancaster County Dispatch Center at 299-4321 or the local police in your area. If you have a Centel cellular phone, dial star DUI. Tell the police where the car is, the direction it's heading, give as complete a description of the vehicle as possible, and tell why you think the driver may be under the influence. With your help, we can get drunk drivers off our Susquehanna Valley Highways. Average Builders is brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of the free pie in July deal. Almost every week on our ESPN telecast, you hear Denny or I talking about lane conditions and how our pros need to adjust to different lane conditions. For tonight's Average Builder, we thought we'd like to give you a couple of different lane conditions to show how they react, how the ball reacts, and how the pros can adjust to them. This lane, lane number 20 here at Cal Bowl, is absolutely bone dry and earlier I threw a shot on that watch the reaction of the ball on this bone dry lane you can see that it hits about the 11th board hooks immediately goes left of the head pin and I barely kept it on the lane see there was no oil in the front of the lane to help the ball skid down the lane so that's the reaction you get now on this same lane what we did after this is we oiled the lane with the exact same condition that the senior pros bowled on all week long. You see the machine going down there? They actually used three different machines here and oiled 31 feet. After we did that, I lined up to throw to try and get a strike on this lane. I put my right foot on the 21st board and aimed for around the 11th or 12th board. And let's see the reaction of the ball on this condition. You can see it skid down the lane, and now it makes a move at the back end, comes in light, and never fail to carry the light hit. Now one of the problems that pro bowlers face is that the condition changes and the ball actually acts as a transport. It picks up oil and carries it down the lane so the lane gets slicker as we bowl on it. So on this same lane I threw a number of shots on the lane, about 15 exactly, and watch the reaction of the ball now. I'll stand on that same 21st board and I'll try and hit that same 11th board and you see it skid further. The oil is carried down the lane, the ball doesn't make the move at the back end of the lane, misses the head pin, and so it's changed already just within 15 shots. Now what's the purpose of all this? Well, I think it's twofold. First, in bowling, the hazards are hidden. The only way that you can find them out is to throw the ball down the lane. 
and second to show you that the oil on the new surfaces is moving all the time. So our pros have to be making adjustments all the time. And the ones that make the best adjustments, well, they're the ones that win the big money. We'll see you again next week from Escondido when we'll have another Average Builder. Gene Stuss, who is $110,000 richer, will have to calm down because Tim Albin is next in line here at Cowboy. Here's another great reason to switch to Pizza Hut delivery. Free pie in July. Free pie in July. Free pie in July. Get a free medium single topping pizza when you buy a large pepperoni lovers, meat lovers, or supreme pizza at regular price. Free pie in July. Free pie in July. So make the switch to Pizza Hut. It's going to be a great summer. Free pie in July at Pizza Hut. You demand the same things from your car that you demand from your budget. Both have to go more places, last longer, and work harder than ever. So get Walmart savings on the motor oil engineered for today's smaller cars. Castrol GTX. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. And Walmart savings provide maximum protection against paying too much. Walmart. Always the low price. Always. People don't stay at La Quinta Inns just because they happen to see one everywhere they go. Although, it is a convenient excuse. Call 1-800-531-5900. La Quinta Inns, America's hotel value. This is La Quinta Inns' new money-saving super value rates coupon. And if you can't find one, just tell them you saw it on TV. Call La Quinta and ask for the new super value rates from $34.50. Starting Saturday, you'll see Nitro Furnace, Fire Screecher, Gear Grinder, Rubber Melty, Metal Bandit, Rubber Bayon, Engine Blast, and the Eardrum Break and Excitement on a July 4th weekend of motorized mayhem. Saturday. Get set for NASCAR's Pepsi 400 from Daytona. Saturday Night Thunder and some use of Midnight Bandit. Sunday. See the Grand Prix of France and the wildness of Indy Cars New England. Motorized Mayhem, July 4th weekend on ESPN. Beaver. Tim Albin, Gene Stuss. Well, Stuss becomes uh, the richest 300 player in the history of the PBA with that $110,000 check. $110,000. The incentive from the Brunswick Corporation was $50,000 for the ball, $100,000 if you wore the shirt and the ball. Well, I know Brian Collins and company over there in Brunswick will be, uh, they'll be out there putting the check together. <laughs> Gene says, oh, the 10 bit. I love these 10 bits as long as they're to start a game and not to finish one. What a night on ESPN. First ever 300 game. Wow, if that had happened one shot earlier, but that's, mm -hmm. isn't that pretty? The all 12 X's there. Well, he joins a host of five other PBA players with perfect games in the championship round. 1967 at the Firestone Tournament Champions, Jack DeAngelo was the first one to do it. Then Johnny Gunther followed him up in, I believe, San Jose. And then Alameda, Jim Stefanich back in, I think, 1973 or 74 did it. And then Pete McCourty waited all the way until 1986. Pete McCourty won 100,000, and Bob Benoit did it from the top spot in Grand Prairie. First time ever, though, a 300 game on ESPN, and we're proud of that. It's been seven years since I've been doing the telecast, and you've been around for, what, 11? Uh, 12 or 13, somewhere. Wow. <laughs> and uh, amazing that it's a senior that does it. You know, first time that a senior has done it on national television. And like you say, it's the rich. He's the leading money winner this year, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> what a night for Gene Stuss and for senior bowlers throughout the country. A couple of years ago, no one had ever heard of Gene Stuss. Almost a player of the year a year ago. And well, after this 300 game, that might get him a few votes for this year. Hey, that's bowling immortality yes, right there. Uh, the G name of Gene Stuss now will never be forgotten in the game of bowling. Interesting, because we found out just uh, near the end of the championship uh, game, or I should say that 300 game, that the Brunswick Corporation had put the $100,000 incentive in there. And I chatted with Gene after the game was over. We were in commercial break. I said, Gene, did you know that shot was for $110,000? And he winked his back. <laughs> And did he throw it nice, didn't Boy, he? Boy, yes. Okay. For that much money, Ooh. my heart would probably stop. <laughs> well, you still remember the shots of Pete McCormick. Remember how oh, the Pete's knees shaking. were shaking? Yeah. Boy, he threw a quality shot, though, in the 12th grade. Sure did. Yeah. Bob and Oint went through it like it was nothing. He was really aggressive all the way through. Oh, he yeah. was. 
he bowled a brilliant game that day. And he had 12 plus shots. He didn't have anything. Gene had just one light hit here, and everything else was just. Yep, and one shot that was a little suspect, and it carried nicely. The rest of this is a bit anticlimactic, don't you think? It seems that way. We have to build our way back up. It's interesting, you know, the mellow Southern California crowd, if anything was going to get them excited, it did now, but now there's a letdown here. Stuss now just trying to get back to ground level. That's more like it. Uh, see if he can win another match and maybe head a little further up the ladder. Well, of the five 300s on television before, Johnny Gunther went on to win the tournament, and Bob Benoit did it from the top spot. The other three didn't win the tournament. Well, there has to be a major letdown emotionally and physically after you shoot a perfect game. What a difference a week makes. 153 from the top seed position last week, probably the lowest he's ever felt in his bowling career. Then he walks up next week and shoots 300 and wins 110,000. Way to average 225, huh? <laughs> Incredible, this game of bowling, the ups and downs. This goes to show you, though, you have to persevere and stay there. Well, you talked to the top of the show about bouncing back. <laughs> I guess he proved he can do it. <laughs> do you think he heard it? I guess. Okay. A wonderful gentleman, though. I, I think the one thing I appreciate most about Gene is win or lose, he's always about the same. It's interesting because Dave Davis, PBA Hall of Famer, had dinner with Gene after the show in... Las Vegas last week, and Dave said, I couldn't believe how well he took getting beat in the title match and shooting 153. So there's a real credit to him to be able to, to go out and enjoy himself that night and shake it off. Well, he's proved himself, you know, not only a quality bowler, but a quality gentleman ever since he came out on the tour last year. Tim Albin, the local pro from Torrance, California, trying to defeat the man who just shot 300. There's a strike, and... Uh, Obviously, his wife appreciative of that shot. Boy, that's a pretty outfit. Uh, Tim's had that smile on his face the whole week long. It has not left his face. Well, he wants to say a special hello to Al Utak, who just uh, captured his sixth national wheelchair title. And uh, is a very good friend of Tim's and a terrific bowler in his own right. Love. Nice shot. Good reaction there. Obviously the sun on hand as well. And uh, boy, for Gene Stuss, what's your attitude right now? I mean, it would be awful hard to keep your head in this match, wouldn't it? I mean, you'd be thinking about taxes and <laughs> what you're going to try and do with the CDs and, uh, right? I guess. That's what you'd be thinking about. Some new golf lessons, perhaps. <laughs> I think Gene, though is as focused an individual as I've seen you know, at, at winning. He wants to win, and that's what he's thinking about right now. Well, I think we need to mention, too, that Timmy is standing off to the side. We have two chairs back, and the bowler always sits in the chair. He injured his left knee before the tournament started, and he's been limping for the whole time. He had an automobile accident or a go-kart accident back in 1987, in which he was almost killed, and they almost had to put his body back together again. Pretty shot there. And uh, he's going to have a doctor look at this knee after the tournament, but uh, he's looking at it. It may have been a blessing in disguise, but he's afraid if he sits down that he won't get back up. So he bowled the entire qualifying round of 18 games and the entire match play of 24 games with never sitting. Stouts with a double back ahead by two. Now Jim Alvin will try and regain the lead here in a second game. In case you've just joined us, Gene Stuss shot 300 in the opening game, won $110,000, and became the sixth player in PBA history to shoot a 300 game in the championship round. I tell you, I know what it's like to stand up there under that kind of pressure just for the first one, the 10th. I never got to the 12th one, and I know how nervous I was at that point, you know, and the way he handled that, knowing that that was worth $100,000, boy, that just shows me some intestinal fortitude inside of that man. Let me ask you a question. Would it be easier for a senior to shoot 300, an older player, a guy that's accepted life for what it is, or for a younger player in your early 20s? Well, I'll answer that in a minute. Let's take a look at Timmy's style here. Five-step player. He's always had a classic delivery. Shoulders level, nice level backswing, square at the foul line, on balance. 
It's hard to answer your question. Uh, personally, I feel more relaxed, and I think I would be more relaxed in pressure situations, but when we bowl the senior Turing Pro doubles, it's always the Turing player that, that is the anchor man. Mm -hmm. and, the, and it's usually agreed upon by both parties. They consider that guy better in the match. Albin on the left hand lane runs it high and leaves the 6 10. Tim Albin right now trying to regroup a little bit. Speed is the thing. He's trying to overcome the dryness out there with loft. He's been doing that all week, but he's got to maintain the speed. Shot a lot of these in practice. Let's see if he handles it okay. Nope, took the six right off the ten. Keeps on smiling, but he trails in this match. And there are the five before tonight who had the perfectos. Gene Stuss added to the list. We've just discovered an artifact used by Columbus himself on board the Nina. That's a mug from Long John Silver's. Just 99 cents with any meal. I have a complete set. We've just discovered a complete set of artifacts. Go fish, go go Okay, on the left, that's it. Smile, they're all related now. I know it's scary. Aren't you glad you used dial? Hold it. No, no, don't go anywhere. Don't you wish everybody did? Take the picture. When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. They think it costs less. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, a guaranteed economizer muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, installed by experts, starting at $24.95. So when somebody says they have a cheaper muffler than Midas, they're right. When they say they're better, fact is, they're wrong. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. Tim Alvin, just standing around right now, trying to keep that left knee loose. And they made a special provision, you know, normally you have to sit in the chair, and uh, so the tournament director, Rich Weber, said that as long as he moved over here and stood over here, it would be no problem. Gene Stuss up by 18 on a double in the sixth frame. So he's got the luxury that when he goes straight down about four or five, the ball lays in the pocket when he swings it wide, it just banks back. He has not missed lane 22 yet. I mean, he had 12 there, and he's got four out of six here, so what have we got 18 shots? He's got 16 strikes. He has turned into a machine here this evening. Gene the machine. Uh, the green machine. Gave it a little room, six pin. Didn't quite finish the job in the 10 pin stand. Of course, Gene, now for the rest of his life, with some 10 pin stand, he's going to be saying, well, I'm thankful it didn't stand on that 12 shot. <laughs> oh, my. Came out last year and won this event, and that was really what vaulted him to the top of the BBA Senior Tour. His knife barely takes the 10 off. But it appears to be, I'll tell you what. <laughs> The fickle finger of fate was out last week in Las Vegas, but uh, must have taken the week off here in Lakewood. Well, you know, we talked about, in the tip tonight, we talked about adjusting to lane conditions. And he never made the right adjustments last week. This week he is, and what a difference it makes. I mean, he's the same bowler, just one week later, 150 to 300. Better speed on this shot, a nice reaction for Tim Alvin, who says, I'll take His whole attitude this week is he may never get here again, and he's just going to have a good time while he is here. Also wanted me to make sure, absolutely sure, that I said hello to Merritt and Esther way up there in Columbia, California. That, of course, is mom and dad. And they're watching and hoping for Tim to win here in game number two. Well, Tim wants to win right here, down 27. He needs to strike in the eighth frame on this left line. More room. Rolled out and left the 10 pin. See that ball just kind of quit right at the pocket then? Mm -hmm. Tim shaking his head, was hoping for a little carry there to make things interesting. Of course, aside from bowling on the PBA Senior Tour, he also owns Alvin's Bowling Supply in Torrance, California. You see the ball kind of quit at the pocket and leaves that soft 10. This is the spare he practiced for at least 20 minutes on the before the telecast. 
That's trouble. That's why he practiced it, because he knew he was going to have... Timmy throws the same shot at the strike ball and the spare ball. And most contemporary players will throw a different shot at the spares, and they'll throw it straighter and harder. He's really a racing buff, and you've talked about that. He's had more injuries than Evil Knievel, I think, in terms of racing. Meanwhile, Gene Strasstein from old and long. He's thinking about John Hersena, who will be up next if he defeats Tim Allen. John Hersena is thinking about 242. <laughs> With their average, they'd say, this guy may shoot another 300 at me. Brunswick would give him another 100,000 if he shot another 300. Oh, sure they would. Those folks? <laughs> yeah. No question. No question. No. Jack Riker to give him 100,000. Personal check? Sure he would. A lot of room. with another strike and he's on target now to shoot 249 we may see 800 plus here tonight as well it's entirely possible entirely possible three spares oh yeah watch how light it comes in barely hits the hip pin. the hip pin clips the two that's known as the bucket crumbler thumbs up of course we have to give credit where credit is due tom zader the pba senior tour lane maintenance director is the guy who Designed the oil pattern this week and put it out there. And the difference between the two players is the speed. Uh, Stuss, the, the lane is dry out there, and T Timmy's trying to overcome it again with loft and turn, and his ball's actually rolling out of the pocket where Stuss has got good speed and uh, ball's finishing at the ball. It's interesting with Tim. He's obviously, we've talked about his racing career, and uh, he said it's extremely technical. He said people that don't really understand racing don't have any idea how many factors that you have to apply. He said, but that's why I've been interested in bowling again. He said, with all the new high-tech equipment and all the things that are happening in the game, he said, it just kind of sucked me right back in, you know, with leverage weight, axis weight, the different surfaces, bowling balls, and that's why he's back bowling. But interesting, I talked to Gene, and I said, what kind of weights do you have in your ball? And he said, well, I just got a, a little side and a little top, which means the ball, he wants the ball to go down the lane a little bit and make a, a reasonably de decent finish at the pocket. You know, it's just traditional weights that have been around the game of bowling for 40 years. So it's nothing exotic like the block weight or leverage weight or all these different uh, new things. Well, it's, uh, it's an experience. Timmy had a good time while he was out there, but it uh, didn't present too much of a challenge to Mr. Stuss. Gene Stuss, the man of the hour right now. What a perfect game in game number one. And that was worth $110,000. That's a lot of dough. Uh-oh, an errant shot on lane 22. I thought it would never happen. Never happen. On a, that's the first one that he started at the pocket rather than down the lane, leaves the baby split, and that's just concentration. I mean, you know, he's in such a good mood right now. <laughs> well, the match obviously was well in hand, so uh, he obviously didn't concentrate at the baby split. So I mean, nothing's going wrong for him tonight right now. It'll be interesting to chat with him at the end of the telecast. Thinking about it. You're assuming he's going to make it all the way through, huh? Well, <laughs> we're going to talk to him one way or another. Okay. If not anything else, to ask for a loan somewhere along the way. Right. $110,000. Wow. You had some years where you didn't make $110,000. I never made $100,000. No. Did you see that solid 10? That was just like his 12th ball last game. <laughs> Gene Stutz with a 300 game and two consecutive victories. Gives it the thumbs up. We'll be back with more after this. McDonald's salutes the fastest men in the world. Harris and Dillard, 1948, 100-meter dash. The most graceful diver. Patty McCormick, 1952 and 56, springboard and platform. The finest gymnast. Peter Vidmar, 1984, team and pommel horse. McDonald's salutes the determination. Al Order, 1956, 60, 64. And 68. Discus. The fierce competitiveness. Nancy Hogshead. Carrie Steinsiefer, 1984 Freestyle, Tide, The Dairy, Bob Richards, 1952 and 56, Pole Vault. McDonald's salutes Sheila Young, Pablo Morales, Willie Davenport, 
and all the men and women who over the years have honored this country in the Olympics and showed us that dreams can come true, just like they did for former Congressman Bob Mathias. 1948 and 52, decathlon. Why get an inferior shave when you could have the best? Why choose ordinary lubrication when you could have the richest? Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when you could have the most advanced, giving you the closest shave with less irritation? Edge Gel. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. When Batman's arch enemy, the Penguin, reserves a room at any choice hotel, like quality, comfort, clarion and sleep, or Econolodge, roadway and friendship, he doesn't get to stay free. But his kids do. Kids 18 and under stay free at any of the seven brands in the Choice Hotels family. Call 1-800-4-CHOICE today. It's a July 4th weekend of motorized mayhem. Points leader and Daytona 500 winner, Davey Allison, heads back to Daytona for the Pepsi 400. Don't miss the fireworks Saturday morning at 11 Eastern, live on ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gene Stuss, the winner of game number two. And he defeated Tim Alvin, 226 to 164. And that, of course, was after a perfect 300 game and game number one for Gene Stuss who collected $110,000 and we're told also that the good folks here at Cal Bowl have been giving all the players $300 for shooting 300 games this week so now it's $110,300 Mike Durbin for Gene Stuss the number keeps going up let's talk to John Handigard now hi everybody I'm with John Handigard the tournament leader John uh, the 300 games the big story tonight uh, did you anticipate anything like that in the practice ball well, the way we bowled over there, I had no clue. I thought 240 would be a big, big game. And uh, to see Gene do that and uh, throw those last shots so good, it was really a thrill. Did you know that it was worth $100,000? Not until it was uh, during the game, and John Racina, he was aware of it, and he told me about it. And Unbelievable, isn't it? It's great. Well, let's get back to you. Last year, in 1991, you were the senior PBA player of the year. Just how important was that to you? Well, it's, uh, it was a very big thing. It was a goal of mine for the last few years, and I worked really, really hard. I guess hard work does pay off eventually. And so, uh, I don't know, it's exciting. It's something they can never take away from me, and uh, I'm going to continue to work as hard as I can. And uh, if I ever get close enough to have a chance at something like that, I'd be excited. How about tonight? If you win tonight, you got five victories. You'll tie Tita Semez with six as the uh, leading senior winner. Is that important to you? Well, it's really important to me, particularly the way Gene is bowling. You know, he was second last week, and he's bowling great today. And if I could win, then I would put me uh, closer to him for the year. And uh, it's a continual battle. I, mean, I, want, I don't want anybody to get too far ahead. Okay. All right, let's, you've got the reputation on the senior tour as a hard worker. As you said, hard work pays off, that you practice more than anybody else out here. What I'd like to know is what drives John Handigard? I'm not sure what it is. I keep striving for perfect for perfection even though I know it's not I can't attain it and uh, I work real hard just trying to stay in the present moment and when I'm involved in something like bowling I'm involved 100% you going to win tonight I'm going to give it my best shot the way those guys are bowling now I don't know well he doesn't sound real confident Denny why don't you take it back and uh, we'll see what happens as good a player as he is Jim Russell is number six as we take a look at our top 24 and number seven Ron Winger Robert North finished up eighth this week, and then James Brenner was in the number nine position. In number 10, Bob Serpe and Dan Kukic. 12th, Mickey Spezio, and Jack Calhoun was uh, the lucky number 13. And Paul Keppel in the finals, along with Las Vegas' Ernie Belts. Wes Campbell, number 16, the cranker from Texas, and Bill Johnson was 17. Dave Toole, the lawyer from Washington, and James Long in his first finals. 19th and 20th, Les Schisler and Bobby Dunn. And John Greco in the first finals for a while, along with Robert Gibbs. Bill Bunetta, 72 years young, qualifies and finishes 24th. Shell Wilson was the alternate this week. And guess what, Mike? We had a perfect game here this evening. 10 years 
weeks ago yesterday. The man who works the stats in the truck for us, Mr. 900, Glenn Allison, shot three of them. So, gosh, deja vu here at Cal Bowl in Lakewood. Gene Stush, he's the new Mr. 300 on the senior tour, takes on John Hersena when we return. Some beer companies pour their money into expensive sports events. That can be a trap for you. Other beer companies pour their money into commercials filled with bathing beauties. That can inflate the price. But at Genesee, we pour our money into the purest water and the finest grains. Jenny Light, the light beer that's real beer. video we rented last night. Oh, you bring it back. You picked it out. Only because I didn't have the one you wanted. Yeah, but you still liked it. No, I didn't. I hated it. Well, I hated it more. What? Okay, well, I returned that stupid movie you rented about the... The worst part about renting a movie is having to make a special trip to take it back. With pay-per-view, you never have to take anything back. Why rent it? You got it. It's a July 4th weekend of motorized mayhem. IndyCar drivers pull out their roadmaps and race in New Hampshire for the first ever New England 200. A green flag drops Sunday afternoon at 12.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I've heard of having double vision, but triple vision, Mike Durbin, the Budweiser girls are here with us tonight. That does kind of think you got triple vision, doesn't it? Well, we have a 300 and three lovely ladies to watch it. We're three, three, and three tonight. That makes 900 with Mr. Allison, right? right? I know one thing, I'm going to go out and buy a lottery ticket tomorrow. <laughs> Three's your number, huh? It is now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gene Stuss is trying to win his third match. And he opens with a light hit. John Hersen is going to be thinking, no, 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 not me. No, no. he's already got 300. I know he can't shoot 240 this game. <laughs> I shoot 240, may shoot another 300. John's probably thinking the same thing. John says, as long as I keep striking, I can't lose. <laughs> I got a chance. I can go sudden death with him. Uh, really has taken it well, John Rusetta. We've been joking around, but in the last year and a half, players have shot some telephone numbers against that gentleman. Would like to double it doesn't cut that shot off a little bit short and leaves the baby splash was so even a man like him you know that tried to fit that one in there rather than just let it go there. now he's got the baby split and john i'm sure is going to throw it just hard and straight trying to clip the three pin on the right switch his balls throws a line drive and fits it very nicely between the three and the ten yeah, that's the contemporary shot. What most of the, the turning players do is, is pick another ball and throw hard straight at the spares. Outside line, light hit, and scatter around. You know, I find it interesting, Dan. We're talking at the top of the telecast about the new players, and we've got 30 new senior members a month joining the uh, the PBA, and new guys coming out here, new guys on the telecast and everything. When we get down to the final two games of this tournament, who are there? Handy Guard, Stuss, and Ursena. The top three from last year. Here we are with three again. And for three in a row. <laughs> and leaves his third ten pin. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Oh. And Gene's doing 17.6 miles per hour, bellying it about uh, two and a half boards. Interesting, at 27 feet, the ball gets out to four. Looks like it gets out further than that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And our Brunswick Bowler track. Turning the progress on lane 21 tonight. Just the left-hand lane this evening. Turned out to be the crucial lane. Got a nice frame for Gene Stutz. So basic four-step delivery. Very strong. Strength, the biggest asset in this game. 
Well, we were kidding around about John and all the big games that have been shot against him, and I had a chance to talk with him prior to the telecast this evening and asked him about those big scores. Yeah, I've uh, I've had a lot of big games shot at me. Uh, I'm hoping it'll end sooner or later, but uh, if the, if it doesn't end, I'm still having fun. I'm making some money, and uh, I hope maybe this week might be my turn. More speed, more turn. That lane hooks on that left lane. Good a player as this guy is, he is six and sixteen in the championship round, one and seven in title games. No matter how mellow you are or how even tempered you are, that plays on your mind. And on your wallet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nine pin lead for Gene Stutz, who needs to win one more game to get to the title match and take on the current 1991 PBA Player of the Year. As far as the seniors are concerned, John Hanegar. Did you see that ball lay there? Woo! That ball looked about four boards left of target. I don't know if it was that much, but he, he went with the, the boards, but the ball just held pocket. Watch it. Right here. Right about the first arrow. And now it looks like it's going to go high and it just kind of lays there and the two trips out the four. No, was that a tug or was that a foul line adjustment? It was a tug. There's John Shooter, the general manager here. Cannibal. Great week for him. Of now he'll be able to puff out his chest and say the first PBA senior 300 game in the championship round was bowled right here at Cal Bowl in Lakewood, California. And they, like you say, they were given $300 for every 300 game. Good shot here. Not, nothing that he did wrong. The ball just finished hard and left the 4-9. The ball cuts right through. See, the speed was slightly slower than the last time. Four-tenths of a mile slower. And not quite as much belly. You want a little more direct with that shot. Tough spare. And the ball is heaven. <laughs> That's what her sin is saying. I knew, I knew if this guy got 300, I could get him in game number three. Long way to go, though, here in the semifinal. And the title match will not be an easy task. I again. Oh, the three, four, six, seven, ten. All right, how do you convert this? Michael? Well, we used it on a tip last year in which you have to hook it in behind the three pin and drive the three into the four seven. So he's going straight. I don't think that was the right way to do it, Dan. I think you have to hook the ball in behind the three pin. Even if he'd have clipped the three pin on the right, I he'd have missed the four, I believe. When you hook it in behind that spare, it creates a different angle on the pin going across the lane. Yeah, because the three pin's going to be right at the target if you don't hook around it, isn't it? More room on this lane. It gets a light hit. Yeah, well, it's going to be right at the four pin anyway. Yeah, right. After the open, though, 14 pin lead for Gene Stuss here in the semi-final game. We'll be right back. I'm a big man. Why do so many men stick with big? I'm a big man. Because there's a big for every beard. Regular, sensitive metal. Yeah, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. Batman Returns is at McDonald's on six 32-ounce collector cups topped off with flying crispy bat disc lids. You can get a superheroic cup at a special price when you buy any extra value meal. Because what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Tastes like a beer, cause it should, cause it's brewed like a beer, of course it's good. Working out or working late, when you're thirsting for a break, let's be perfectly clear. It's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. Oduls. Oduls, the brew from Anheuser-Busch, with the alcohol naturally removed for real beer taste and only 70 calories. And it's time and it it's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. Oduls. Gene Stuss in the semifinal game, still leading. He has been most of the night. He was ahead in game number one from start to finish. See, and that's just not good match game bowling on John Hersin's part, where he's opponent open and then you open behind it. And the baby split again. You know, suddenly uh, the lanes are changing a little bit, although he's going more direct. He's not trusting it to the right like he was. 
And that ball looked like it was a couple boards left of where he was even the last frame when he struck. He's made this once on this lane already, so he should know where to stand and where to aim, but he needs to make it to maintain the lead. Has to hurry. He doesn't. So suddenly, uh, we're going from 300 and everything down to 180s then. It's a humbling game. Yes, isn't it? Yeah. But as we, uh, you know, I talked about in the tip, you know, that the ball carries the oil down the lane. The lanes are changing. They have to make adjustments constantly during the, uh, both the qualifying finals and now telecast. Disrupted by... John Handigard has a brush that he brushes on his shoe over there, and he dropped it over on the practice pair. Well, we're just thankful he didn't drop it in game number one. Don't even think about that, especially in the ninth or tenth frame when Stuss going to 300. In case you've just dialed in ESPN to our telecast here this evening, you were about an hour late because things started with a bang here at Cal Bowl. That gentleman right there, Gene Stuss, became the first senior ever and the sixth PBA player ever to shoot a perfect game on national television and courtesy of the good folks at Brunswick and, of course, the PBA and the house won $110,000 and added 300 more. Now, if he wins the tournament, he's at, what, 121,200? Get uh, 130,000 after two weeks. Good start. Ready to catch the guys on the national tour. That's right. Eric Forkel is the leading money winner on the PBA regular tour. Well, we've had everything on the telecast tonight. 300s, now channel balls. Susan, his wife, saying, oops. John, yeah, John, we didn't need that. The only good part about that is that he was on a strike, so he didn't lose any count. If he can convert all 10 pins for a spare, he just gave it too much room. I'm going to say he's going to come back and strike on the shot. Whoops, well, unless it's Brooklyn. <laughs> Slight adjustment made there. You knew that ball was going loud. Oh, boy, that's an embarrassing frame. The first ball in the channel, and the second ball misses the head pin on the left. And right now, you rattle. I mean, just destroyed inside. And Gene Stuss is sitting back there thinking, now, wait a minute, what is John doing here? Don't tell me I'm going to get a chance to come back in this game. But he leads by 19. Let's see what John can do on the left-hand lane. I again. And he leaves the dreaded Durbin. 3, 6, 9, 10. And the way he's playing the lanes, he's going to use his strike ball, or his, the first ball, to shoot at this spare. This is no gimme spare at all. I don't know how he's going to shoot this. He's going to shoot it off the strike line or move left. He's moving way left, but he's got to hook it in to get the ninth in the back. Good shot. Boy, boy. I'll tell you what. 300 to 150. That's why it's the dreaded derby. <laughs> <laughs> the DD. It's a dreadful <laughs> shot. Uh, and a disaster normally. Tough, tough spare. Well, Stuss now is ahead by 30, and Gene has to be pinching himself at this point. Right Boy, the lanes are changing. Hey, that one a little room didn't quite finish. Oh, right went, now, he's just trying to finish. He went straight down the lane with that. You know, I asked John Handigard in practice if he was going to move out there with the rest of them, you know, and he had a different ball. You see, this ball just not grabbing. He went high the last time. He probably moved the board with his feet, and now it doesn't make it back. Again, it's those adjustments. Got a handful on that shot, and now he trips out the four and the ten. As we say, it's his night. Handy guard beats him tonight, I'll tell you. A puzzle Gene Stuss, and man, I yanked that shot, didn't do it very well, and yet I double in the eighth and ninth, I'm leading by 40, and I'm thinking about successfully defending my title. Black for a strike on lane 22, so Hersena has done anything but give up, but the best he could shoot would be 176. And uh, Gene is going to be in the 180s, even if he opens in the 10th frame, so even if John strikes out, it's more or less just to save a little embarrassment, and uh, Stuss is going to go on and face Andy Guard if he can just stay behind the foul line. And the two players that finished 1-2 in the voting last year for Player of the Year will battle each other here for the title. The rematch of the uh, Battle Creek Senior Championship match. Which Andy Guard more or less handed to Stuss.
Poor John just never seemed to get lined up. He was uh, bowling well in practice, too. It, the lanes are just changing. Funny thought just came to mind. What if John Handigard steps up in the title match before they start and Gene says, hey, I'll bowl you for 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably won't happen. Finish off with a 2 8 10. Wow. Tough night for John or Senna. Sooner or later, this thing is going to turn around. And when it does, it'll be like the floodgates. He'll probably win four or five in a row. Meanwhile, Gene Stuss will get to the title match. This, believe me, has already been a night that he'll never forget. But if he wins the title on top of it, whew. Nice strike for Stuss. We'll head to break when we come back. Gene and John for the $9,000 first place prize here at Cal Bowl in Lakewood, California. Why get an inferior shave when you could have the best? Why choose ordinary lubrication when you could have the richest? Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when you could have the most advanced, giving you the closest shave with less irritation? Edge Gel. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. Some people think he's a Superman, but when a 45-year-old has to throw 75 fastballs, even Nolan Ryan's muscles can ache. So after the game, it's the medicine doctors recommend most for sprains and strains. Advil. For me, it's a couple of Advil, and those muscle aches are long gone. And Advil's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. Today, it isn't aspirin or Tylenol acetaminophen. It's Advil. I feel ready to go another nine inning. Advil. Tablets and caplets. Advanced medicine for pain. People don't stay at La Quinta Inns just because of the refreshing swimming pool. However, it does create quite a splash. Call 1-800-531-5900. La Quinta Inns, America's hotel value. This is La Quinta Inn's new money-saving Super Value Rates coupon. And if you can't find one, just tell them you saw it on TV. Call La Quinta and ask for the new Super Value Rates from $34.50. All-Pro quarterback Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want two things for my pain-relieving rub. Fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain-relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. I just massage in Sports Cream for fast, odor-free relief. Cream or lotion, Sports Cream sure gets my vote for fast relief and no odor. Championship Frame is brought to you by Midas for mufflers, brakes, and shocks. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. And make no mistake about it, nobody has beaten Gene Stuss here tonight. Let's go back. Frame number 12. Game number one for $110,000, Mike Durbin. It was a key shot for Gene Stuss. Probably the toughest shot of his entire career. I would think. And he couldn't have thrown it any better. I mean, for $110,000, one shot. Flush City, and here's his reaction. Fans went wild, so did Gene, and rightfully so, as he shoots 300, the first ever 300 on ESPN. And obviously moved on to game number two, and this was a ninth frame strike. And Timmy just uh, never got lined up, so Gene had basically had the game line locked up. Ninth frame action, a little bit light, everything going his way. Thumb was up. And so was Stuss in match number two, 226 to 164 as he advanced over Tim Alvin. And then it was the semifinal. And the first one in the 10th, he had a double working. Basically just had to stay behind the foul line. Right over about the fifth or sixth board, going a little more direct now. Comes in light, and he's got all the hits working. Another bucket crumbler. Gene Stuss relaxing, chatting with Bud Fisher, PBA Hall of Famer. 213 to 153. Gene has John Handegard next in line. If he wins that match, he will collect $119,300. Sounds like a game show, doesn't it? When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. They think it costs less. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, a guaranteed economizer muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, installed by experts starting at $24.95. So when somebody says they have a cheaper muffler than Midas, 
They're right. When they say they're better, fact is, they're wrong. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. This new ready to trimmer, she's a something really special, huh? <laughs> Quick down the straightaway, nimble to the corner, stops on a dime. <laughs> and it's just like me. She's a one good-looking trimming machine, eh? Fine-looking dog you got there, Jack. Name's Poolan, after my trusty chainsaw. That's Poland. Oh, and to think he's been answering to the wrong name for all these years. Dang. Everyone has a dream, a vision deep inside. With all the mutual funds out there, I needed an easy way to help me compare them. We make it easier to follow your own lead. With Schwab's free mutual funds performance guide, I can compare track records on over 500 funds. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Gene Stuss, John Handegar for the Pacific Cowboy Senior Open title here. And John Handegar at least has done something different than all the other opponents. He's going to make Stuss finish on the left lane, 21. The handyman comes out right up the track and strikes just like he did all last night. And John's kind of using an over-the-top release. You see his hand rotate over the ball, almost a semi-spinner type thing. Now has to forget about everything other than the title match. It's off with the speed that time, and the ball bit quickly. Four, six, seven. See, then what goes through his mind right then? Is that the lane, or was that me? And so the next time he comes up on that lane, the tendency is to say, you know, it was the lane. I'm going to move aboard left, but I really think he just threw the ball slowly. wonder what the speed was on that shot. I think it was down less than 17. I bet it was, too. When he shot the 300 game, every shot was over 17. Oh, he... <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> well, was coming in there. <laughs> yeah, the gentleman was really flowing. He was throwing fastballs. <laughs> what a night for Gene Stuss. And thankfully, you and I were here to watch it, huh? Thankfully. Better speed with that shot. What a nice reaction. Well, Gene's come back before. Yeah, that arm swing's got to be loose now. Well, he's still balling for a title. You're right. You know, he's, he's balled two other games since the 300. He's forgotten about that. And he wants to win. And he can honestly say he doesn't care about the money now. He always cared about the money, didn't he? Yeah, Handy guard up the track again. This time, can't get the six pin to take out the 10. But I have a feeling that... Old John is going to do nothing but strap this ball in the pocket. Well, he's playing further out than he had been. You know, he's watched these guys, and John's uh, certainly a bright guy. He's using weights, interestingly enough, all week long, where he has a little thumb and positive uh, weight, uh, positioning a, a pin on the bowling ball, the, the, the weight blocks. And the purpose of that is to try and get the ball to make a nice, even arc all the way down the lane. Trouble. Oh. John's style of bowling is he doesn't like violent reactions. He wants an even arc to his ball all the way. Consistent. Kind of like his uh, bowling game. Mm -hmm. Consistent. Well, perhaps the one aspect of that is the fact that you get a good feel for what the lane is doing if you make a good shot. I mean, you don't see the over and under reaction. Right. There's nothing more discouraging than to make a good shot and the over reaction of the lane throws the ball either high or light. Went a little further right with this one, and it came rolling back and rolled out in the pocket. Well, see, that's that, that weight that he's got in the ball makes the even reaction. The, the whole idea of it is when the ball hits a dry area of the lane, it doesn't overreact. It makes a gentle move rather than a hard move. If it hits the oil, it kind of rides it. Further right with this shot, and a beauty it was for Gene Scott. And the speed was up. We'll never know whether he moved with his feet or not, but uh, I think he did move a little bit left. His feet. He might have, but it also looked like he, he threw that ball a little bit right, Mike, on the shots that he's gotten in trouble on the right-hand lane. It's almost as if he's pulled them. That's right. The swing bounces out a little bit at the top and heads high. 
Kind of like Mike also. Mm -hmm. And the guard up by one, but Stuss is on a double here in the fourth frame, looking for three in a row. This guy's a competitor all the way through, I'll tell you what. When you consider the fact that Gene Stuss finished 27th last year at the Firestone Tournament of Champions, that says a lot for his playing against the touring players. Isn't it? Yeah. Are trailing by nine gives it room didn't make it back interesting he picked the finish on this lane that her sin in the last match picked the finish on the eleven the uh, left lane never got a strike on it now John has picked the finish on the right lane and uh, soft hand and the two pin Don't forget a little later on this evening, Sports Center will be coming your way. And uh, John McEnroe continues to play nicely at uh, Wimbledon. The Reds and the Pirates will have highlights of that one. And the Dream Team update. Uh, they blistered Argentina last night. They blistered everybody. It was close, though. It was less than 50. Oh. The, are they doing handicap things in that? Or uh, I don't know. Giving points? I like the Cuban coach's remark. Beating them is like trying to block out the sun with your finger. for Sir Handegard on the left-hand lane, and he'll take that strike. And again, when he throws it right on the left lane, it makes it back. He threw it right on the right lane, it didn't make it back. 17 to 11 looks like a first-quarter score from the NBA, doesn't it? 17 strikes on lane 42. Good lane. Let's make it 18. He gives it that room, and it makes that arc. It's just dead flush into the pocket. Stuss looking for another big game and a title. Ahead by 19 as he heads to the sixth frame. See the 229 average on this parable. John Handegard averaged 235 on lanes 21 and 22. Good speed. A little bit too much speed. I'd like to see what Bowler Track said on that one about how fast he was zipping that one down there. Almost 18 miles per hour. We <laughs> 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 could make sure that one didn't go high. I'll tell you. That's Joe Berardi's speed at a spare, 17.9. Oh, no, he gets it up about 20. Yeah, he revs it up about 20. You're right. He's the hardest I've ever seen anybody throw in a spare, Joe Berardi. Stuss with a spare. That hasn't happened many times here tonight. Andy Gar's thankful. Now, John has got to figure out the right lane this time right now. Nice adjustment. Did you see that? It's like he went one and one right. One right with his feet and one right with his target and just made a perfect shot. See the straight swing. Short. Look at the follow through, the balance. Now the arc of the ball. And watch the six pin just kind of lay on that 10. Nudged it over. Kiss and a kick and the 10 pin disappeared. A double for Handy. If he strikes here, he retakes the lead. Ooh, that came off nice and clean. Oh. The thing about John Handegard, Mike, you could pick the first frame, the seventh frame, the fourth frame, look at him in his shot, and they all look exactly the same. You wonder why he didn't do better as a younger bowler. I mean, with a solid game like that. Well, I was there at his worst moment in Salt Lake City. I remember that one, too. Final eight games, he was leading by almost 300 pins, and Wayne Chester caught him. Hurry. Thankful that the seven pin fell. Pin rolling around, almost hit that two pin. And I tell you what, he's got it coming out of the sky at pin. But he still trails by three if he makes this. Next week in Escondido, Palomar Lanes. I'm told that uh, they still have room for a few more pro am entries. If you're interested in bowling with Gene Stuss or John Handegard, oh, you'd love to bowl with Gene. Ask him about that $110,000 shot. Oh. oh. 
and a mistake for Stuss. At this point in time, that was a lapse in concentration. Well, he, he played it from the inside, and it hit the oil and just skidded right by. He kept waiting for it to hook, and look at the difference. So close, you couldn't put a piece of paper in between those. That's like he missed by a freckle. Yes, by a freckle. Keeps himself alive. And now Mr. Handyguard yeah, is he's a driver. He's seat. on a respirator now. <laughs> Let's see what John does in this right lane. Handyguard up by 14. And he's now up in the eight. It was right about this point in the championship match at Battle Creek that John handed it right back to him. Not this time, boy. He didn't get to be senior PBA player of the year for nothing. Just a perfect shot. Wants a re-rack here now. Same shot again. You can't tell the difference. The ball makes the arc a little bit more flush. That's a board 17 strike right there. And when you say board 17 strike, what are you referring to? Well, the, there are uh, 39 boards on the lane, and the center of the pocket on both sides is board 17. Increase it to 34. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow, the pocket 710 and Mr. Stuss is suddenly very much alive. Wow, what a bad break. What a bad break that was. Comes in light. Watch the head pin and the five pin. The head pin went in front of the seven pin and the five pin just died. Ops for the seven. John Handegard, the perfectionist, felt like he'd do an excellent shot, ends up with an open in the ninth. He could still shoot 226. But Gene Stuss is in the position that he can lock him out. Stuss could shoot 236. Here's the big shot. Gave it room. Oh. Can't throw it any better. <laughs> Even that's going into the 10th frame. It's who can perform here that'll win the match. Well, that's usually what it comes down to for a title. It's, it's, it's justice. These two guys have been the two best players out here. It comes down to the 10th frame. Which one performs in the 10th wins the tournament? All handy wants is a chance. Right. We get another tie. It's conceivable. Lots of speed. Oh, the eight pin was up there for a second. Now it's just calm down, relax. You like to see that eight pin fall late, don't you? Watch it. He almost has the solid eight. He couldn't have thrown it any better. And the head pin, I think it was, going by just the butt of it, clipped that eight. This is for the win right here. pin this time. Mr. Handyguard has a chance, and he never changed expression. Yeah, but I'll guarantee you the blood pressure went up about 40 beats on that shot. Stuss with a spectacular shot to lock out Handyguard comes up empty-handed. And the five pin went in front of the eight on that shot. If we saw a replay, you'd see the five pin slide right in front of the eight. Thus, on one hand, has to be thinking, I got a great break with the first shot, and then, well. Watch the reaction. Look at the five. See, right in front of the eight, like a bullet, it shot over toward the seven. Just flicked it, but the eight pin remained. Now Stuss has to watch John hand it Needs all three, and starts with the first one. Oh, was that, the six just laid on that ten. I don't know if he's going to strike out, but I'd be willing to put some money that he is going to hit the pocket. Watch this shot. Oh, that's just a pretty shot. As Billy Whaler used to say, the tender touch. He needs this one and one more, but if he doesn't strike here, Stuss wins.
has to hurry. Oh, the solid 10. For Gene Stuss, a dream-like performance. He wins the tournament, shoots the 300 game. <laughs> what else is left? And a week ago, he was as down as you could get. John Handegard with a brilliant shot to try and win the title. Watch the six. It just isn't fair, Dan. You throw it that good and don't win, but what a performance by both players. They're on their feet, and rightfully so. Gene Stuss has made history here in Lakewood. The other day I get in my car, won't start. No small problem, right? Well, I figure it's the battery, so I go down to the auto zone and I tell them what I need. The guy says to me, let's check your old one first. It might not be the problem. Turns out he was right. All I needed was a new battery cable. Talk about saving money. Now you tell me, would another parts store done that? They made sure I got exactly what I needed. Now I'll remember that. Believe me, I will. When Batman's arch enemy, the Penguin, reserves a room at any choice hotel, like Quality, Comfort, Clarion and Sleep, or Econolodge, Roadway and Friendship, he doesn't get to stay free. But his kids do. Kids 18 and under stay free at any of the seven brands in the Choice Hotels family. Call 1-800-4-CHOICE today. Fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. In places you can think that you know you got it right. Everything else is just a lie. Everything else is just a lie. Keep your butt light shining. Here's another great reason to switch to Pizza Hut delivery. Free pie in July. Free pie in July. Get a free medium single topping pizza when you buy a large pepperoni lovers, meat lovers, or supreme pizza at regular price. Free pie in July. Free pie in July. So make the switch to Pizza Hut. It's going to be a great summer. Free pie in July at Pizza Hut. The championship round finals of the Pacific Cowboy PBA Senior Open are being brought to you by the more than 600 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the right parts at the right price. And by United, come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. You know, Gene, I've been waiting seven years on ESPN to stand next to somebody that sh would shoot 300, and it was for $110,000. What was going through your mind on that last shot? Uh, well, Denny, I just got up there, and... Uh... I said, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I just, I just want to make a good shot, and if it carried, it was 300, you know, but I just tried to make a good shot. Well, let's look at that shot. Tell me about it. Don't tell me you're speechless. <laughs> no, I come up on, Mike's <laughs> going to say I come up and get on the fall shot, but it carried, though. You can applaud. All right, Dan, you have a, a check worth $9,000 and a beautiful trophy to our champion. Yes, first the trophy on behalf of Pacific's Cal Bowl to our only champion, Gene. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And a check for $9,000, and we owe him another $300 and a jacket. <laughs> That's what I understand. Thank it's been a big much. night for Gene. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Chairhouse and the Brunswick Corporation, and I'd like to thank... Uh, the PBA for the 10,000. I'd like to thank Neil Sharp and everybody here at Cal Bowl. What a beautiful facility we have here, and I hope we come back next year. And I'd like to thank all the fans. It's just been a great week. I'm lucky. I really am lucky to be in the finals. I, I got a break uh, last night in the match play to make the last spot, and 
I can't, can't explain what happened. All right, well, uh, we've got another check for you now, and this one's worth $100,000. Chuck, uh, why don't you present it? <laughs> Gene, congratulations. You've had a heck of a day. On behalf of Brunswick Bowling and Billiards, it is my pleasure to give you a check for $100,000. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you very much. When we come back, we'll ask Gene how he's going to spend that $100,000. For over a decade, while cable television grew, the network TV executives sat back and watched. They sat around while cable created better programming, and they lost millions of viewers. Now, the network executives are sitting in Washington, asking for legislation that could result in an additional charge on your monthly cable bill. If they can't stand up to the competition, don't let them make you pay for it. Contact your congressman through this number and state your opposition to paying for free TV. ESPN Home Video presents Practical Jokes on the Pros, a home video featuring baseball, basketball, and football stars that you'll watch over and over and over and over and over and over, and over, and over again. Oh, yeah? The hilarious Practical Jokes on the Pros. Michael, a question for the $100,000 man. Well, Gene, last week, you bowled for the title in Las Vegas, 150. You had to be down at the bottom this week. What a difference a week makes, huh? You're not kidding, Mike. Uh, last week, I was completely lost on the TV show. I, I practiced, and, and I, did, I wasn't confident in the shot I had. In the last minute, I made some changes. But today, I made up my mind I was going to play, play outside, come higher water, and I was confident that it would work. And... I guess it did. <laughs> I guess it did. For Mike Durbin and the $100,000 man, this is Denny Schreiner saying so long, everybody. Next week, the PBA Senior Tour heads down south to Palomar Lanes, located in Escondido, California, for the championship round finals of the $75,000 Escondido PBA Senior Open, beginning at 7.30 Eastern Time on Thursday, July 9th, live on ESPN. Coming up next on ESPN, it's live top rank boxing featuring Scotty the Bulldog Olsen in a 10-round flyweight bout. That's, of course, coming up from the El Dorado Hotel and Casino in Reno, Nevada.